Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's Saturday morning, and I hope you have plans to get outside for some fishing, hunting, or hiking this weekend. One thing you may want to do is head to the lower Columbia River for catch and keep sturgeon fishing. Max Lure Pro Guide Bruce Warren, the owner of Fishing for Fun Guide Service, will break that fishery down for you at the bottom of the hour. Or maybe you've got a hankering for some eastern Washington walleye. If so, you'll want to stick around for the end of this week's program because Bob Loomis is back for another extended Max Minute to tell you about a tried and true offering for walleye he would have been trolling if he was fishing the Rod Meesburg Spring Walleye Classic at Potholes Reservoir a couple of weeks ago. A tournament that included a big walleye that was weighed in at just over 8.4 pounds. Before we do that, though, we need to tell you, as we do every week, what's hot here in the Pacific Northwest. Brought to you by your Puget Sound Sportsman's Warehouse stores located in Silverdale, Federal Way, Everett and Puyallup. And you'll want to keep an eye out for the Memorial Day weekend flyer. It's coming out in the next couple of days, and there's going to be some great deals for the big weekend, and you are going to want to take advantage of them. One thing that's hot, our computer keyboards. They are clicking away because hunters are putting in for special hunt permits. The deadline is May 22nd. It's coming up really quick. So if you want to apply for anything from fall turkey and designated areas to quality deer and elk hunts to once-in-a-lifetime chances for a bighorn sheep, mountain goat, or moose, you better get to it. Checking in with NorthwestFisherReports.com, poster, fishing original, and a buddy went out to Lake Washington last Saturday in search of bass. Casting plastics from their boat, they caught five good bass, averaging two to four pounds, total weight around 15 pounds, and they found one post-spawn fish in the backwater and four others in 10 to 20 feet of water that had not spawned yet. Sounds like this is a good time to be fishing this big lake between Seattle and the east side cities. Another place where the bass spawn is on is at Potholes Reservoir east of the Cascades. Pete Fisher at the Mardon Resort Store reports fishing the sand dunes with half-ounce jigs and craw trailers, swim jigs, chatter baits, and punch rigs, or chartreuse spinner baits are all working. The fish are in 1 to 10 feet of water right along the willow trees. There are also smallmouth back in the sand dunes, and they are also around the rocks around Goose Island and the main reservoir. Try fishing finesse jigs, wacky rigs, senkos, crankbaits, and swimbaits. They'll all work for the smallies, and if you need a place to stay, look no further than mardonresort.com. Down in Tillamook, we learned from the guide's forecast that nearshore angling for lingcod and rockfish has been excellent, and the occasional spring chinook is being caught out of Tillamook Bay. If you're fishing the bay, try using spinners and plugs on the outgoing tide and herring during the incoming tide. If you don't have a boat, find a place to fish on the Trask River near the hatchery. Spring chinook are starting to show here, and eggs or sand shrimp under bobbers are your best bet during the morning bite. Finally, Walleye Week is happening May 20th through the 24th. That's the word from WDFW, who are inviting you to send your best walleye photos or videos to their Facebook page this week. On the 24th, they'll announce the winners who are supposed to win, in their words, some really cool prizes. And I'm just guessing here that they might be related to walleye fishing. In addition to this, there's going to be a live stream Q&A on the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife Facebook page on May 21st at noon, featuring biologist Danny Garrett, who will field any walleye-related questions you may have. Oh, and if you've never tasted walleye before, you are missing out. I honestly think this is the best-tasting white meat fish you can eat out of the fresh water. And with that, you are now in the know about what's hot right here in the Pacific Northwest. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation.
Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. The catch and keep sturgeon season is open on the Lower Columbia, at least certain days of the week. And we thought it'd be a good time to check in with Bruce Warren, the owner of Fishing for Fun Guide Service, who is down there this weekend. Bruce, great to have you on the air. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. This is a season that generally starts slow and gets better as we progress. How late is the sturgeon season going this year? What are the days of the week we get to fish? Well, it's going to go to June 5th, which is a Wednesday, and we get to fish Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays from today, May 13th through June 5th. And as for this theory of later is better, why is that? Well, right now the water's still a little chilly down there. It is warming up nicely. Uh, We don't have a lot of bait in the river yet. And boy, those big sturgeon, they feed off that bait. So when we see the birds, we'll see the bait and we'll see the big sturgeon. Speaking of bait, what do you like to use? Well, down the lower river, we use fresh is best. Usually we'll be using anchovies uh, and sand shrimp, depending on where you're fishing out in that river. If you like the sand, use sand shrimp. The little deeper holes, use the anchovies. You know, I thought shad was kind of the go-to bait, especially for bigger sturgeon. It is the go-to bait upriver. Obviously, the shad run through the lower river, but they don't stop and hold anywhere. There's nothing there to stop them. So upriver, that is the number one bait, not so much in the lower river. Now, I know the, the limit is one sturgeon. What is the actual slot limit for a keeper? And how many sturgeon on a good day can a client expect to battle? First of all, the slot limit this year, uh, same as the last two years, is 44 to 50 inches. That's a six-inch slot limit. That's not very much leeway. So you really got to watch what you're doing. You're allowed one fish per day, two per year. And you can usually battle in the early part of the season, one, two, maybe three per person. But when it gets going, later in the June, sometimes you can get 20 or 30 per person. And folks, if you hook into a big one, that one is often quite enough as far as most people are concerned. But you get these medium-sized ones and you are in for some great fights and in for some great days. And a great person to go fishing with is Bruce Warren. The website, if you want to book a trip with them, is Fishing for fun guide service.com that's fishing for fun guide service.com bruce thanks for sharing this with us on america outdoors radio you bet john thanks for having me on from well-known saltwater hot spots to hidden alpine lakes learn the latest in tips tackle and techniques to help you catch more fish it's gonna be a great show northwest fishing reports sundays at 5 p.m on q13 fox I'm Bob Loomis and I fish for walleye. Sometimes when I'm out on the water I feel like a destroyer captain hunting for targets with my electronics. I'm not hunting submarines though, I'm hunting fish. And when I find that big one on the fish finder, I want to make sure she's going to bite. That's where the Smile Blade Slow Death Rig from Max Lure comes in. The Smile Blade spins and flashes at ultra slow speeds and the one of a kind red hook keeps that bait moving in a way the fish can't resist. It's the Smile Blade Slow Death Rig, only from Max Lure. Are you looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? Then set the hook because we've got it right here for you. America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer affordable platforms to reach thousands of listeners interested in fishing, hunting, and the outdoors. Find out more by contacting John Cruz through his website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. It's time again for another Max Minute. And with us again is Bob Loomis from Max Lure. Bob, the Rod Meesberg Spring Walleye Classic took place earlier this month. There was, oh, 92 anglers all trying to catch a whole bunch of walleye. If you were there fishing it, what would you have used? I would have probably used a double whammy walleye. Well, the biggest walleye that was caught there was an 8.4 pounder. And there was a lot of walleye caught as well. Uh, Only one team was skunked. So they were using something that was working good. But why the double whammy, which I know a lot of people were using there? Well, the double whammy walleye is a crawler harness setup, which means that it has, you know, a pair of number four hooks that are relatively separated. You know, they're separated by a couple inches. And then you have beads. Beaded products with a spinner blade is still one of the largest crawler harness setups in the world for walleye. So with the high UV beads that we have on it, with the wedding ring band, and 
with the smile blade that we have on top, which obviously creates wobble behind it because it's an offset inline ultralight spinner. You can get some tremendous, tremendous forage base colors for what you need in any given lake. Well, there you go, folks. You can match the hatch with a double whammy walleye from Max Lure. It's one of my favorite lures. I've used it for years, and it does work. So whether you're going to be competing in the Rod Meesburg Spring Walleye Classic next year at Potholes Reservoir in eastern Washington, or maybe fishing the Governor's Cup this year at Fort Peck Reservoir in Montana, consider the double whammy walleye and see if you get to the top of the leaderboard. Look for this lure at maxlure.com or at a sporting goods store near you. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR.